I heard the 3080 was so powerful that all modern day CPUs will bottleneck it. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Before we start, quick thing, I gotta do the um, the draw for the giveaway. I'm gonna do it right here, um, just while we're going here. I'm gonna pull this up. And let's give this a click. I've never done this before, but here we go. All right. Uh, Justin Summers, Sommers, if you see this, please comment down below so I know that you're not a troll and you actually watch my videos and I will send you the drive. If not, we'll draw another one next video. And back to the video. All right, now that that's out of the way, um, today we've got another clown show, for, I mean, um, Frame Chasers episode for you. This one's actually kind of uh, semi-serious though. I've, I've got a lot of questions on uh, what's my opinion on if modern day CPUs will bottleneck the 3080 because it's so powerful. Well, uh, we can just use my 2080 Ti to test it because it comes within 10%. Let's, let's just, for the sake of argument, we're just going to assume it comes within 10%. But yeah, we're so close to the release now, or the, the launch, I want to say, the, the review launch, that uh, there's not really any point going over any more leaks. Um, I want to do something more uh, tangible um, for people that are building new PCs for this launch. So that's what we're going to do today. What we're going to be testing is just pretty much core scaling, actually. Um, we're going to do... I got a 10900K... What I'm going to do is I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to lock it at 5 gigahertz, um, DDR4, 4000 RAM, uh, C17, 32 gigs. And all we're going to do is just reduce core count number. So we're going to do, uh, all the benchmarks, uh, 10 cores, eight cores, six cores, four core. I'm not going to bother with two cores. That's a waste of time. But, um, yeah, 10, eight, six, four. With high, I'm gonna we're gonna do with hyper threading. I'm maybe if I have time, I'll do uh, an eight core without hyper threading for all those 9700k users. Well, just I'm I'm actually kind of curious now too, actually. So games on the list today we got um, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Far Cry New Dawn, and uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, they all got different game engines. Different bottlenecks of how they work with the GPU. Um, they all have built-in benchmarks so they're easy to do. Um, yeah, that's what we're going with today. If you're wondering why we're only doing three games, you gotta figure I have to do four core, six core, eight core, eight core without hyper threading, and ten core. That's plus three resolutions. Five times three. What? 15, 15 benchmarks per game, three games, my math is terrible right now, 45 benchmarks I have to do, that's a lot of time, that's why we're only, uh, hardware on box, I don't know how they do like 40, 40 game benchmarks man, like it's insanity, like me doing three takes me all day, like it's crazy, but the game diversity is large enough that I think we can extrapolate some data from this. Alright. No, I'm not going to be doing any AMD CPUs today because, uh, A, I only have the 3950X, and B, I don't use AMD chips for gaming. Uh, sorry, they're just slower. Just sorry to say. Like, I, like... I, I use my Intel chips for my gaming, and then I use my Ryzen chips for what they're good for. Um, rendering, streaming, compressing, decompressing. They're they're workhorses. They're not gaming machines. They're, they're not they're not they're not go karts. That's what the Intel chips are for. So I'm not. Sh I'm honestly I don't know if you can. Uh, I don't know if you can take the same data of these numbers and apply it to AMD CPUs because I don't have them to test them. So we're just we're literally just gonna do Intel CPUs for this one. 
but maybe you can take a look at the actual core counts and maybe extrapolate some AMD data from that. I actually don't know, so I can't help you with that one. Also, they're all going to be locked at 5 gigahertz, and they're all going to... I'm literally not changing any BIOS settings. I'm only disabling cores as I go down. That's it. They're all going to be 5 gigahertz and 4,000 RAM. Like, everything else is going to be... We're only looking at specifically core count numbers here. So the goal is, depending on what machine you have, if you have a 7700K, 6700K maybe, 8700K, um... Will you need to upgrade to get to make the maximum use out of your 3080? Let's find out. That's what we're here for. Hopefully between this video and the last one, you can make a really good decision of where you are in the uh, spectrum of the 3080 launch, I want to say. Okay, let's get into some benchmarks then. Uh, first one we're going to start off with is uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider here. I'm going to bring this up. Alright, so we got the uh, Tomb Raider numbers here, 1080p, 1440p, 4K, um, you can pretty much read for yourselves. I did do the 8-core without hyper-threading. Um, so in this game, you're pretty much fine, like you're not going to have any bottlenecks, like 1440p and 4K are pretty much the same all the way through. E even when you go down to like a 4 core 8 thread, you're only losing 5 FPS on 1080p. This is, um, uh, highest settings in Tomb Raider. Uh, in, in 4 core 8 thread at the 1080p, you do lose about, like, this is starting to get into some CPU bottleneck territory here a little bit. But I mean, even if you're playing on a 1080p monitor at max settings, whatever, like, you're not going to notice a 14 FPS difference. Like, the, the, a 5 gigahertz 4 core 8 thread is still fine for this game if you have a 3080. Um, any, any i7s from uh, 8th gen and up, you're all good here. Like, don't worry about any of this. Alright, let's go on to uh, Far Cry. Alright, here in Far Cry, it paints a little bit of a different picture here. Um, 4K, don't worry about it. You're completely GPU bottlenecked at 4K in this, in this, uh, I mean, for all the games, it doesn't matter. 4K is still just too hard to run for, uh, for a 3080 or a maxed out 2080 Ti. Um, we do start to see a little bit of bottlenecking down at 4 core 8 thread, even at 1440p. Like, it's starting to hit a little bit. And 1080p, of course, has, 1080p 4 core 8 thread has the highest bottleneck here. Um... But still, it's, you're still only losing 15 FPS. Like, like big deal, you know what I mean? As long as, If you have a 7700K and you got yourself some DDR4 4000 RAM, low timings, you're still fine. And I know, I know somebody's going to be like, but you didn't check the frame timings. It's like, dude, like, this took me all day to do at, in the first place. Like, I don't have time to be posting, like, 40 minute long gamers nexus frame times like i'm just saying if you have a four core eight thread and you have some really fast ass ram like i do on this one and it's overclocked to five gigahertz you're fine like don't worry about it if you like if you get a 3080 don't worry about it all right horizon time this one is probably the most interesting out of all of them um highest highest level of bottleneck as well with the four core eight thread also, oddly enough, it does the best without hyper-threading. I mean, we, we, we do know that some games don't like hyper-threading, but I guess this is one of them. Um, so the the 9700K uh, users, this game's for you, for sure. But, um, yeah, other than that, this one actually does start to scale down below 8 cores, 8 threads. So 6, the 8700K, you're going to lose a little bit, like 10 FPS. Um, even in 1440p, you're starting to lose a little bit. And in 4K, actually. Um, this game actually is pretty CPU demanding, even in the higher resolutions. But, yeah, 4 core, 8 thread, 1080p, you're losing about, what is it, 20 FPS. So that's quite a bit of FPS you're losing. So, but, I mean, it's not like you can't play the game at 88 FPS, you know what I mean? It's still... This is still fine. And if you go to 4K, you lose nothing. Like, it's 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 fine. What I'm trying to get at is if you own a 7700K or a 6700K, 
delit it, liquid metal it, um, overclock it to five gigahertz, get yourself some nice RAM or overclock the RAM that you have and don't worry about it. Buy the 3080, enjoy it. You might lose 10 or 20 FPS at 1080p. Big deal. Just like you're, you're not bottlenecked. Like, I mean, like, like the bottleneck shifts to the CPU, but it's not like the CPU is like bottleneck is kind of a kind of a funny word in itself like like technically the cpu is bottlenecking it but it's not like you're gonna have an unenjoyable experience playing a game with 10 less fps you know what i mean so like like don't worry about your bottleneck just like take your money and buy a 3080 with it and just be happy for now you can upgrade the cpu later when ryzen 4000 comes out don't worry about any upgrades for now for this launch whatsoever. Like, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, these benchmarks took a hell of a long time to do. Um, hopefully, it was enough to earn your subscription, though. And in terms of will the Ampere cards make use of PCI Express 4.0 in some manner that we don't know? Um, possibly in the future, but from what we know so far, everybody's been using the 10900K for their uh, benchmarks for these things. So we have to assume it's not saturating PCI Express 3.0 yet. And hell, if you look at my card, uh, my 2080 Ti, it's not bottlenecked at all by, by uh, PCI Express 3.0. So we're fine there. Don't worry about that. Let's say, you're, let's say you buy the 3080 and you're playing Horizon Zero Dawn or some really CPU intensive game and you got a 7700K and you have a 1080p monitor. What you could just do is you can just move the resolution scale slider up and just look at your FPS counter and just keep moving it up until the FPS counter starts to drop and then just stop. So like you're rendering the game at like what 1600p or something and your visuals will look so much nicer and crisper. But, like, you're still on a four core, so it's fine. Like, you can just get around your bottleneck that way. Just shift the bottleneck back to the GPU. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. The Now, look, looking at the data now, this... You're fine. Like, you're fine. Like, if you had a, if you had a 2600K, though... But then again, if you have a 2600K buying a 3080, you, you're in a whole different class of bossness. Like, that's, like, you're, you're on, like, a nine-year-old CPU and you're buying a 3080. Like, uh, that is, like, that is, like, props. That is so awesome. If you do have that, please get in touch with me because I want to know benchmarks for that. That is awesome. Again, not applicable to Ryzen chips. Um... I assume the 3300X would perform identically to the 4 core 8 thread numbers. The only two Ryzen CPUs I actually recommend right now are the 3300X and the 3950X. Um, anything in between there, Intel is better for gaming. Um, actually, the, the 3950X for workstation purposes, 3300X is the best budget CPU that you can buy for gaming by far. Like that... When I did my review of that CPU, that thing hauled ass. Like, that thing was awesome. But the uh, 3600 up to 3900X, too laggy, too slow for gaming. Don't worry about it. But, um, yeah. So, long story short, after all that, just buy the 3080 and enjoy it. Don't worry about CPU bottlenecks. You're fine. Um, sky Laking up, though. Let me, let me, let me preface that if you have a sky lake chip and up you're fine if you have like a a four gigahertz haswell yeah that 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 would not be good that would not be good no that would not be good all right guys hopefully you learned something in this one uh thanks for joining me and uh if you could just do me a favor and do all that youtube seo stuff for me like comment share do all that stuff uh it helps push the algorithm and I will see you guys in the next one. Get your um, get your F5 trigger trigger fingers ready for that 38 launch. Just just gonna mash that at 6 a.m. Pacific time because uh, I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing. Uh, if anyone happens to get an extra card by any chance, hit me up and I'll buy it off you. If uh, I didn't get one, uh, yeah, try and get two of them if you can. But um. Anyway, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. This one's going up live on Tuesday. 
Not gonna, not gonna have one on Wednesday. Thursday morning, I'm mashing the F5 button, and you will know if I got one or not. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Thanks for joining me. See you later.